Uh, well, good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to thank uh, my colleagues, Dr. Saw, Dr. Carter, uh, for inviting us to give our team to give this talk. This vest is bulletproof, so just in case you decide to shoot, um, I'm wearing it. I intend to take a commonsensical view on the topic of hip resurfacing today. Uh, these are my disclosures. As many in the audience know, I'm a recovering hip and knee surgeon who left full-time practice to join the dark side of the orthopedic industry. And as I was thinking about writing this talk, the first question that came to mind for me, actually, was why are we debating this topic in the first place? I believe that hip resurfacers and anterior hip surgeons both have the same goals of preserving soft tissue, preserving anatomy. Joel said it better than anyone, you know, preserving offset and anatomy. So why are we even arguing? Admittedly, most resurfacings were indeed developed in the early 2000s when most of hip surgery was done with patients positioned laterally, right? And most were metal on metal designs. However, in 2023, with new materials emerging, I believe that we can actually uh, realize the synergy of hip resurfacing and anterior hips, and I hope to get you thinking about that a little bit. And I suppose my fascination with resurfacing began during my fourth year medical school clerkship in, uh, in uh, rheumatology. I had a professor who was kind of a nerdy, intellectual, very smart guy, a uh, pretty condescending guy, actually, who said that he, can, he was hazing me when I told him I was going to orthopedics. He said, well, you know, you guys are barbarians. A total hip is nothing more than an intercalated amputation of a normal femoral neck. And it really got me thinking that he actually may not be wrong. If we look back at the history of hip re replacement, uh, our modern giants in the field, like uh, Charnley and Wagner and others, they actually, their first attempts at doing hip replacements were indeed um, resurfacings. And the reasons the procedures failed was not because the, uh, the operation was flawed. You can see here some sections of, of Wagner's original work that show the beautiful bony trabeculae going right up to the surface of the implant. The reasons the procedures failed was because of polyethylene wear and inferior materials. And most of you might think I'm crazy for talking about resurfacing, that it might be dead in 2023. However, the data would indicate otherwise, that the procedure is actually experiencing a well-reserved resurgence. Several prominent resurfacing patients in, the, in recent months and recent years have been accomplishing some astonishing athletic feats in their respective sports. I'm always pretty in, in awe of Andy Murray and folks like Bob Bryan, who are able to play tennis on the resurface hips. I cannot say that I've ever seen a patient who has a total hip do anything like what he's about to do here, and apparently nor has Mr. Kokinakis uh, as well. Um, and again, hip resurfacing is not beneficial only for professional athletes, it's also beneficial for non-professional athletes. For the past two decades, multiple centers around the world have documented that patients routinely return to higher level function and uh, high heavy labor. Military patients re consistently return to labor after resurfacing at a higher clip than they do after uh, replacement. And I'll invoke the apropos words of everyone's favorite psychologist, Abraham Maslow, and his most prolific PhD student uh, pictured here to introduce the question of why is it that our knee-jerk response to uh, hip arthritis is to always remove the femoral neck? Well, for me, the analogy reminds me of my beloved wife, who has a strong affinity for overpriced restoration hardware furniture. And a few years ago, we bought a table that was apparently made of Pacific driftwood for a price that was way too high. And within a couple of months of having the table, my son decided he didn't like the surface and decided to take the fork and scratch it. And uh, you know, I, at, at that point, I suppose I had a couple of options. I could either you know, take the barbaric approach that my rheumatologist professor would make fun of me and, um, and chop down the, uh, the, the legs of the tree, or I could take some, perhaps something a little more practical, a little more economical, and sand the surface and, uh, and repaint it, which seemed to me to be a little, more, um, a little more practical. And the other question I'd ask the audience is the reason that we're all so anti-resurfacing, because there were a few metal-on-metal -metal designs in the mid-2000s that performed poorly. Well, these implants were originally billed as improved engineering versus the BHR, which had been around, as you guys know, for a decade doing well. And I'd say it's inaccurate to conclude that uh, single, that resurfacing is, is, a, is a flawed operation. That would be like throwing out and saying that country music is crap because of Billy Ray Cyrus and the achy breaky heart, which I think is a little bit harsh. Country music is crap for a bunch of other reasons, actually, in my opinion. Um, but anyway, uh, so why is resurfacing better than total hips? We'll talk about that now. Um, first of all, starting with anatomy, I think it's pretty commonsensical. Again, Joel said it best. Uh, repro anatomy reproduction is much better with hip resurfacing than with total hip replacements. Multiple centers in the UK, Canada, and worldwide have demonstrated that hip resurfacing does a better job of restoring anatomy and soft tissue both versus total hip replacement. In regards to one of the most basic measures of human function, the ability to walk, Justin Cobb, who's sitting here in the audience, has done some fabulous work over the years demonstrating that resurfacing patients walk much, much better, not slightly better, much better when the speed exceeds 
exceeds anything more than an anemic three, three miles an hour. THA patients at these speeds tend to limp. They tend to uh, take shorter steps. Their stride length is shorter. In addition, multiple authors worldwide have demonstrated that a higher rate of return. You just saw the video of Andy Murray to both recreational and professional sports after resurfacing. I come from Tampa, Florida, where Exactech is located. We love Ron DeSantis and we love professional wrestling in Tampa. And of course, The Undertaker, who's in the middle of my slide here, is perhaps our most celebrated athlete who has had a, a prolific professional career after having a resurfacing done. Um, and so moving along, and I guess, uh, yeah, sorry, uh, moving along to the next topic, if this hasn't been controversial enough already, an additional benefit of resurfacing that has now been documented from multiple authors around the world and multiple registries is that at 10 years post-surgery, the mortality rate after uh, resurfacing is lower, statistically lower than total hip replacements. That's even after correcting for factors like Charleston comorbidity index, ASA, activity levels, et cetera. And this data has been published by prominent centers, not by obscure you know, centers in, in Tahiti, no offense to Tahiti or anything, but, and you know, Professor McMahon has done some amazing, some beautiful intraoperative transesophageal echocardiogram work comparing total hip replacement patients to resurfacing patients. And he's, he's trying to uncover some of the physiologic reasons for what we're seeing. You can see here this first echo that's been taken at the time of reduction of the total hip replacement clearly shows that the patient's right heart to me, it looks like a teenage spring break confetti party, and all this debris invariably ends up in the pulmonary circulation. This is in stark contrast to what I'm showing now, which is a second echocardiogram that shows the resurfacing, and you can see after the reduction maneuver is completed, the, um, the uh, echocardiogram looks as placid, like Lake Placid in the wintertime. So again, I'll let you make your, you're all physiologists as well, I'll let you make your own conclusions of what's happening there. Um, moving along, uh, the other question I'd ask the audience is, the other reason that people are against resurfacing is because there's a learning curve. What I'd argue, and I think it's been demonstrated over the years, that anterior hip replacements also have a learning curve, and that any operation that's anatomy preserving is harder. It's more difficult, right? Anyone can go in and chop out a bunch of anatomy. So it's been well documented that both resurfacing and total hips have learning curves. And in general, I'd say learning curves are worth it. Our patients benefit from learning curves. And we all know that many anatomic anatomy preserving procedures like transcatheter aortic valve replacement or union compartmental knees or anterior hips have learning curves, but the patient benefit is worth it. Oh, what did I do? Oh, there we go. And at this point in 2023, it's, I think it's fair to say hip preserving is not some newfangled parlor trick that was invented in someone's meth lab in their basement. These are serial x-rays of the very first ever hip preserving patient who had their surgery in uh, 1997 by Derek at age 38. And here are the 20-year post-op films. You can see the impressive um, bone quality. So this has been an eight-minute eight minute whirlwind talk, and I'm sure most of you are glad I don't have any more time to talk. There are multiple additional benefits of resurfacing that I don't have time to cover, including bone conservation, lower dislocation rates, et cetera, et cetera. If I get invited back to AHF 2024, which I believe is doubtful, we can cover that at that time. Um, and again, in terms of the anterior approach, my, our esteemed colleague, Tony Carter, who's in the front row, and the co-author of this talk, has who's a global guru in, in anterior hips, has demonstrated to us multiple times that resurfacing can be performed beautifully from the front. And he, he was so kind enough to provide some footage here of how he does it using a table and retractors and leg positioning to achieve the beautiful result on the bottom right. So the future looks bright for modern hip resurfacing, I'd say, and several of us in the audience believe that it looks very bright with new materials and new technology, such as navigation, positioning technologies, and robotics. I believe we can make the operation more anterior approach friendly. And several pioneers, including my co-authors of this talk, Derek McMahon, Ronan Tracy, and Justin Cobb, are developing new implant materials. And finally, with regards to what we're working on at my company, at Exact Tech and Joint Medica, we're working on a modern, oh, sorry, shut up. We're working on a modern hip version of the, uh, based on the Birmingham hip resurfacing, a metal on um, highly cross-linked vitamin E polyethylene. Uh, so stay tuned and for our progress and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.